Hey everybody, how you doing? And uh, this video is, um, <laughs> I guess, really, 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 really needs to be done. And the topic for this particular video that's really, really, really high in demand, to my complete surprise, is the, uh, it just never dies. I mean, no matter what happens, it's always, you know, I get people who ask these questions. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, uh, here's the video, here's the step, here's the one, two, three, everything you need to do, blah, 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 blee, blee, blee. And, uh, and it's all actually my fault because I made this one video two years ago that showed a SATA uh, interface uh, that would exist that could interconnect a SAS drive to a PC. But I had mentioned clearly then, and I had re-mentioned yet again, that um, you, you need a controller. Now that was my mistake right there. So what I meant by that is if you manage to get your hands on some SAS disks and if you look here that edge right there is the difference between that and a SATA disk and the L aspect of SATA doesn't exist here because these are dual uh, processing drives opposed to SATA which is serial or single. So you know, if you have yourself what we call a bus array, and this is a bus array, it's for four disk drives, two and a half inch, and you've got yourself your case housing, this guy here supports SAS and SATA. But you need a very important ingredient. And that ingredient is this guy right here. This is called an LS305 or any of the LS9200 series or 9300 series internal SAS cards. Now here are the two internal ports here and I have an example of a SAS to SAS head. That's what it looks like right there, the SAS head. And then this is what usually throws everybody off. The other version cable is SATA. Yeah, okay. So here's the challenge. It really isn't a challenge. It's more of a misunderstanding. Motherboards, when you see them, they have a series of SATA connectors. And when you see a SAS cable with SATA heads on it, you think, well, cool, I could just plug my SATA generic cable in here and into the, into the SAS, but it doesn't connect. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's correct, because it's a transfer cable. It has to connect something that does the actual plugging in to. Okay, in this case, this guy right here. And inside that little box is the actual edge connector that's required for a SAS to properly connect up. Now, with that being said, yes, and I've done videos on this too, you can get what's called a double-sided hedge connector, which will connect a SAS connection up to the SATA bridge cable connection and allow you to interface, but you still always need a controller. And that is the thing that keeps getting missed. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you. Okay. So this is an, a SAS internal controller. An external one would have outputs here instead of on the back, and they would go out to a disk array. You can look at any of my disk array videos, and I'll talk to that to its own. So I won't talk to it here. But in this case, I have two outbound 16-port bridge port cards, which can be connected to any of the disks that are SAS in your system. Now, usually the SAS system will have what's called a disk array. So if you look over here, servers that are servers, they have, you know, they have processors that, you know, they do everything you expect them to do, but they'll have places here for the SAS, and it plugs right into the bus board in the back to do what you want to do. But it's still a server. But people, they go out and they buy a bunch of SAS disks, and they may have to diagnose them first. And so, this is the secret sauce. I've done videos that explain to you how you can reformat a SAS disk from, let's say, a sector interleave of 520 to 512. <coughs> and um, I go through diagnostic steps and so on. But the key thing you need to do is to be able to plug the drive in somewhere so you can test it. Hence the secret sauce. Now, I, doc, 
Icy Dock actually has this little guy right here. And it has case housings like this. And you can take either a SATA, SSD, or spinning disc, or SAS. In this case, this is the SAS drive. And it goes right in, right there. And the drive is now in. That's the cool thing about this. And then this goes into the disc array right here and locks into place. And you've got yourself a, a diagnostic station that you can put inside a PC. Now today I'm going to do just that. I'm going to take this disc array and I'm going to put it into that little guy right there, which is my hard drive diagnostics system. And uh, I'll go through that in a second video. But today what I want to show you is that when you get something like this, this is about $120. Uh, you can get eight if you want it. You can do what's called the double split. And But the point is, on the back, if you look, it has, yep, SATA connections. So now you need to get one of these. It has a SATA, a four pair of SATA here, right? But it has a SAS head here. It's not a SATA to SATA cable. It's a SAS to SATA interface. So on the back here, you have a power output and you are gonna have the four points of contact here that which you put in and you lock these into place because it has a lock on each of these connectors. That's the nature of um, these, disc or these, uh, these types of interfaces. Now, one thing you've got to take notice that when you're gonna do it this way, what you want to do is you'll notice on the back of your, your drive capacitor, it says 1, SATA, 2, SATA, 3, SATA, 4, SATA. And if you look on your cable, it will say port 1, port 2, port 3, port 4. So you want to connect these up in the right proper sequences. Because if you do that, then the port emulation that you see on the screen, when these devices start to go into order, are correctly in the right order they need to be to match the placement of the drive in the array. And to be an array, you have to have at least two drives. That's it. This disk array of four drives has its cable interface right here in the back, plugged up in the proper sequence. But here I have on this end, a connector that doesn't fit on anything. Let's see if I can do this right here. Anything on a motherboard. And that is correct. Now, as an exception, if you have a server motherboard, either a high-end workstation dual processor server motherboard, SMP-based, or you have one that's an actual you know, big guy like over, you see over here, they will have special interfaces on the motherboard that will allow you to plug that SAS connector in. That's not the exception, that's the norm. The exception is for a PC motherboard. In other words, one of these. These generic motherboards right here that you put inside a PC to play games and stuff like that, no, they don't and they cannot support SAS. So with that being cleared up in this discussion, the other part is that other end. So this guy right here, he has to go into something. It's got to be PCIe 2 or 3 or 4 compliant. And this is where this old guy comes in. Now, you can go with the manufacturer of your chassis if it's like an HP or a Dell or something like that. But this is an OEM card made by ILS. Sorry. I always get that confused. Anyways, this little guy here, he's got 512 gigs of RAM on board. I'm sorry, 512 megs of caching high-performance L1 right here. It's got the what we call a storage processing unit here. And it takes the workload off the CPU. It is an HBA. This one is a particular type class HBA. It can also be an RAID controller. What are the differences? Well, a RAID controller can do independently drive configurations on the card, what we call hardware RAID. Very good, excellent, it is old school. Also, in other words, most of the new technicians that come into the world or, or admins have maybe been introduced to the cheaper way of doing this, and that is just throwing a bunch of disks on a bunch of SATA disks uh, uh, controllers, and then you bunch them all together in software with some type of package like uh, ZFS or something like that, 
and you can skip the raid component and you can do software kind of raid in its place. Well, that would be an HBA, Host Bus Adapter. In other words, what it does is it just creates a drive connection, gives it an ID, and hands the ID off to the operating system. And the operating system will see a bunch of hard disks. That's all it does, nothing else. Some RAID controllers can also be put into HBA mode by either a flash or by a selector switch mode. And what that basically means is for people like me who don't want the headache of an operating system or a software RAID tool trying to manage disks and I want it handled autonomously, where it'll go off and replace those disks independently, and I come in one day and say, oh, look, I've got a bad drive. I'll pop it up and put a new one in. And it'll realign it and put it right back into the group, and that's called hardware rating. You can make ZFS and other platforms do the same thing, but it requires some software configuration to make it happen. Uh, it's just two different ways to access a disk. So with that being said, once you've got the connect controller in, you'll have what's called bus one and bus two. And in this case, it's the top one. So you'll take this very interesting looking edge connector set, which has pressure points on each side, and it has a lock on it too. That's the little piece of metal here. And that will go into the card as such. And you'll lock it into place and it locks, okay? Like that, and it won't come out. That's a key sign that you've got server quality hardware. It's because they do a lot of planning and work to make sure that things don't connect due to jarring. Unlike SATA cables, which don't. They just kind of flip on and they're on, and sometimes you have to wiggle them a little bit if they get old over time. Now you'll also see another kind of SAS switch cable, which is this type of cabling, and it has the same edge connector on both sides. You will find some installable disk arrays platforms that will allow you to be able to just directly connect the SAS interface to the um, disk array. Usually they're small, and you get like a four port disk controller, and it will just plug into the back of your disk array as a single connection, and that's a single path. Now, here comes the other thing. You bought hard drives, right? So you've got your SAS disks, you bought them, they don't work quite right, something's not right with them, then okay, let me put them into my PC back here that has a disk array slot and I'm going to put that disk array slot right here and I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to see if it will come up. Okay, so with that being said, if you have in your possession an HBA controller, most of the HBA controllers do not do diagnostics. RAID cards do. Again, there are benefits to RAID cards. You have to learn them, but they will fail a drive instantly if the specs of the rated drive do not match the output of the drive that it's providing when it initially does the boot cycle and posts the diagnostic loop. Um, that is common. Matter of fact, a lot of times people will hope that you have an HBA or you'll have something very basic like RAID 1 based controllers, um, which are basically also HBAs because they don't do anything really. All they do is give a drive a value and hand it off to the operating system. They do that because they know that a 10,000 RPM drive is now performing at 7,200 RPM because the motor is starting to fail and they just want to make some money. And they want to hand off a piece of junk to you and it's a crap shot for them because when they realize, oh, you figured this out, just keep the money, they don't want you to ship the drive back. You think I'm joking? Not even close. You know, when companies get six, seven, eight hundred, a thousand discs, and they come to them, and they take them out of the disc arrays, and they handle them, and they do the things they do to them, and the next thing you know, they, they're piled on top of each other, things happen. But they still sell them. So this is a way you can do this. Now, the next video I'm going to do is I'm going to take that disc array unit back there and that tower, the white one you see there, which I did a video on recently, which I just prepared to do this kind of specific work, actually. Um, I'm going to put all this gear into it, and I'm going to post it, and I'm going to see, I'm going to show you how these can work in different functions and how they will communicate. We'll be using the LS9200 series card. And I'll be putting 
the disc array in and we'll be posting diagnostic loops on it and we'll be doing some basics on it. I won't do any formatting or anything like that because um, I don't, I've already formatted all my drives so that's not going to work. But anyways, uh, so I'll set that up here shortly and what we're going to be doing is I have in that video I have SAS, I have SSD, I have SATA, and I'll put I'll install a drive in a boot process because this one's empty to show you the process of setup. Plus we'll go over the cables in that detailed way workout. And so the last thing I will talk to in this video is this guy. Now again I told you and I told you and I, I will tell you again yes this will connect into a SAS drive okay and this is actually let me show you too what it is it's a Molex connector here and the SAS bridge cable here and then you've got yourself your SAS disk here and you're gonna mount that right on there like that and you can do four of them because this cable comes with four it is the most succinct way of providing everything you need to unless you've got a disk array that does it for you you're going to have to have something like this but guess what's on the other end Ta-da! SAS but just for those who don't know that this is a SAS cover there it is see you need a SAS controller it's dead seriously true and it's accurate so you want to make sure that you get a LS or a series 92 93 is fine uh, understand that 10 6 gigabit which is what this is that's that odd head you see there is different than a 12 gigabit connection I'll show you what that looks like <coughs> A 12 gigabit looks like this. So let me put that up here for you. It's big and has two edge connectors on it. See it there? Versus the single edge connector you see on this one. Quite different. And yes, lo and behold, you can have this on one end and you can have that on the other end. Or you can have this on the other end. Or you can have... Where would it go? Oh this SATA on the other end because the key thing is they're just connections that's all so it's not about the cable connections ladies and gentlemen it's about the actual controller that can see act and take steps to make actions work so uh, this little cute little video I was doing here is just to try to put the nail in this coffin because yeah, it definitely needs to be nailed hard and, and steady Till it's dead, Jim. But key thing is, uh, it's a super way, a cheap way, to get your hands on a lot of stuff so you can do some fairly advanced testing. And uh, it, I say go for it. You know, uh, I've seen some kids have done some really wild, cool things, and all they did was had pieces and parts here and there and everywhere to formulate what they wanted to do. So this is Brad Dyke signing off on this little excursion, and I'll get to that next video here shortly. Bye bye.